13 lah 13 participant hmm. Alhamdulillah uh, Okay but first uh, let us uh, recite uh, Umur Kitab Al-Fatihah to open our majlis Okay, before we begin, I would like uh, to give you a gentle reminder as requested by Prof Ismail. Eh? Uh, make sure that uh, you switch on uh, your video so that we can have, uh, like Prof said, we can have more face-to-face -face interaction even though we are far away from uh, one another. And uh, and I would like to introduce you to uh, Prof Ismail. Eh? Prof Ismail is a professor at the Faculty of Built Environment and Surveying, uh, University of Technology Malaysia. He has been teaching for more than 35 years uh, and uh, very much active sharing his knowledge with universities in Indonesia and South Korea. Uh, to date, Prof Ismail has produced 33 PhD graduates and I was actually the first uh, graduate Maiden issue, eh, Prof. <laughs> In uh, I started uh, 2007 and finished 2011. I did my PhD uh, three years, two months, to be exact. <laughs> right. Um, uh, now he is supervising 21 PhD candidates, um, and his uh, research includes uh, children's environment. Uh, to urban design and planning uh, to heritage uh, architecture. Uh, currently, uh, he has uh, or published 138 papers in journals and five books. Uh, as a scholar, he has visited more than 60 universities to gain and share knowledge. So without further ado, uh, I would like to welcome Prof Ismail for our uh, sharing session today. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. <coughs> Majlina. Uh, truly, uh, Dr. Majlina uh, is the my first student. All right. Hold on, I need to off my WhatsApp. WhatsApp. Hold on. <coughs> okay. Uh, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alamin, wa salatu salam, wa 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 to at least 13 of you all, and perhaps more coming. Alhamdulillah, uh, this knowledge, I gained it from my <coughs> uh, first solution, that is uh, Dr. Mazlina Mansour, uh, followed by Dr. Zumhairan, followed by Dr. Nur Zalina Harun. <coughs> and then, of course, uh, I still supervise uh, many students of many disciplines. Uh, with this uh, experience that Almighty have given to me, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, that I would like to share with you all. Okay? So my session, I will be going to use this whiteboard. Right? Therefore, after this, there is another whiteboard which is 90 degrees perpendicular from this whiteboard. Then I will shift my camera. Okay? All right. I have uh, sent slides to Dr. Mazlina on this delivery, but my delivery is a mix between using the whiteboard as well as using the slides that I have given to Dr. Mazlina. All right. First of all, I would say that it's good that you all able, uh, if you willing to share your video so that I can see your so that if I were to encounter you in an airport later on, then I know who you are. All right. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Okay, first of all, let us start by looking at this word. Uh, Faris, what is it? Curiosity. Thank you. Do you begin, do you begin your study, PhD study with this word? Yeah. Thank you. Good. All right, you hold to that. I'm going to ask another student, Azana Shah. Do you begin with this? Azana, oh, who is it? Um, perhaps I pronounced it wrongly. Uh, 
How about uh, Noor Shara Hazni? Hello? Are you with us? How about Noraida? Noraida, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Do you begin with this, your, your research? Sorry, Prof, I'm admin. <laughs> I mean, oh, minta oh maaf. sorry. Uh, all right. Uh, how about we that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Prof, of course. I'm curious. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. All right. Thank you. All right. All right. Now, let me share one example. So, I'm going to define curiosity. All right. So, you hold on, Paris, and we got you hold to your definition now. You hold on, hold on. Now I'm going to give it on, on my understanding. All right. But I'm going to use illustration. Okay. okay. I think you all have seen this leaf, right? The leaf yeah. of ficus. Right. And then you see this, right? Yeah. Yeah, what is it? Like fruit. Ah, uh, like fruit. Another answer from another person. Uh, give a guess. Alinda, I know. Idris, Atif. It's a fruit, bro. It's a fruit. Okay. Uh, your answer is false. <laughs> your answer is false because it's a false fruit. Uh, now, so it's not a fruit, then curiosity comes. Okay? Curiosity comes. Therefore, I'm going to open this false fruit. In ecology, we call it pseudo fruits. Pseudo in Latin means false. Therefore, in science, of which that your thesis is a scientific document, you must use the scientific vocabulary. Not false fruit, pseudo fruits. Okay. And now the curiosity comes. This is how I, am I going to define curiosity? Yeah. So I'm going to open it. You see this? Yes. Okay. That is the flower. So what you see just now is not a fruit, but a flower. Yes. Therefore, for ficus, it has been in this situation, the flowers at this institution, in Peninsula Malaysia, you see, I'm going to be specific here because science is specific, right? Facts. That there are at least 101 species noted in 1970s where species of Ara ficus available as native plants. You see, the word as native plants, 101 species, 1975. Uh, you can check with more you can check you can check connect right all these are specific when you do research therefore no conjectures or too much hypothesis is allowed you can begin hypothesis in your chapter one but as you go further on it should be all facts okay later on i will show in the slide that what you're going to find is the truth, not only the facts. Truth and facts are two different things. Okay. With this, okay, therefore, how do you want to put in science? One of it, if you look at landscape eco ecosystem, the landscape ecology. We put under a title called interspecific relationships. 
Uh, is it clear on your side? Yes, okay. Prof. Okay, good, good. Okay. So this Latin shape is called uh, mutualism. Okay. Okay, now this is about curiosity, right? So now when I have curiosity, therefore I need to do another step to answer my curiosity. Therefore, the next step is what is this? I know. Exploration. I, I will call your name. You don't sleep. I know. Exploration. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Everybody, you, you, you got to be awake. In your class, uh, Ecology 101. Yeah? Okay. All right. So, therefore, when you have this, how does this mutualism happen? Here, I have I have done something before many times, but I'm going to tell you all. When this pseudo fruits about to write, it will open one aperture. This aperture will allow female wasps, wasps, not bees, in order to enter this small aperture. The female wasps need to disengage its wings meaning that that is the last day of its life of its life enter into these fruits well this flower and lay eggs several and the eggs hatch and the larvae turn into pupae and they consume much of the pollen inside here so when it consume when therefore it when it grows the male will still become male without wings the female has wings therefore they mate inside this when they mate the female with wings go out and go to another flower and pollinate another flower therefore it called a cross pollination meaning that the wasps give benefit to the ficus tree because it pollinates. What do the ficus tree, uh, what do the wasps gain from the ficus? It gets a habitat for each to complete its metamorphosis. Right? So therefore, the female, uh, the, the wasps get plus, so does the ficus get plus. You scratch my back, I scratch yours. Mutual. So this is one. Okay, I'm going to show you another one, which is not mutual. Okay. So I will come to do to, to you why we reached this discovery. Hold on, guys. <clears throat> uh, I hope that this uh, example allow you or as a base for you to go for the why should I do my PhD? I will come to the slides later on. Uh, next is this uh, leaves of Sempaka, uh, for which there is a big tree next to my office. I'm in my <coughs> office in my faculty. I'm the only one in my faculty for now. Okay? But that is not the thing that I'm looking at. This is the host tree, but there is another tree that stick or grow on the Champaka branch here. Anybody know the name of this plant? Uh, I want answer. Don't shake your head. I want answer. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, this plant is the Dalu, right? Okay, it, okay. The Dalu will take much of the nutrient from this because it doesn't have roots, no roots to the ground. Therefore, it is a parasite. Therefore, this relationship is called parasitism. Hold on, guys. I'm going to change later on towards why it became a discovery. Uh 
parasitism. Ya, parasitism. Okay. Meaning that the Dalu wins plus. But the Chapaka 3 loss minus. Okay. Now, when you know this study, uh, how can we turn into a PhD study? Uh, Interspecific inter relationship that are many, mutualism, parasitism, predation, commercialism, neutralism, and I think there are seven altogether. You can check in the textbook. Those are the references that you're going to go. But how are you going to turn into a PhD study? Uh, therefore, we can go to another uh, sector or another thinking that how, why not if we were to bring a unit of analysis to know about this study, uh, this relationship. So therefore, you bring unit of analysis such as young children. Okay, so we're going to bring young children here. Uh, let me use the word middle childhood children. Okay, so this is our unit of analysis, right? Uh, therefore, these are specific things that we do PhD. We don't say just respondent, no. Unit of analysis for which that you need to present it in your thesis, in your proposal, we call it as unit of analysis. Why? You collect data from them. Why? You elicit measure data from the unit of analysis. Okay. But that doesn't end there. So curiosity still comes in. For what purpose that children need to understand about unit of analysis? This is where the importance of asking the right question. Uh -huh. Therefore, in science, we don't give the right answer. We pose the right question. Therefore, Faris, Shahruddin, Aina, Idris, Ainul, Radia Awanga, and many others, 10 others, if your supervisor keep on posing your question, you should thankful to him or her. Why? You able to know what to do next. Uh -huh. So that is where science is. This is it. Right. Now, let me go to another aspect. So we have the subject now, interspecies relationship, but, and we, then we have unit analysis. But what team, research team, that we need to hook on? Right? I like to use the word hook on, right? Because if you were to study in America, they use this very often. Where is the hook? Yes. What's the team? So when we look at children's, we can look at their education, or more likely we call it learning. So in learning, if you were to refer, if you are in childhood research, for which my research in child-friendly environment, therefore we cross over to another discipline, which is early education. Or we call it, we can also call it as environmental education, which is different from Outdoor education, outdoor learning. This, this is called You got it here? Emerald learning? Right? Differs from outdoor learning. How different? That is a job as a teacher to see the differences. Where you going to define it? Chapter two, literature review. Do you all agree? I want to answer. Do you all agree? Yes, Prof. Yes, Prof. You agree? Uh, why, Halinda, you agree? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, through literature, um, we explore different fields um, uh, of relationship through literature. So that is where we 
find the mutual relationship or whether it's uh, uh that is initially right but as you go further you cannot just take you cannot hook yourself to exploration of the future you need to debate you need to debate in order to debate a uh, uh, debate will lead you to synthesizing therefore literature review is the written text on your own stance not cut and paste for which that many pieces appear that way wrong okay so when we have this i'm going to bring you to another mode more precise and just you no know, this is early go to another mode for which that it really hits to the middle childhood needs for which that those who are in urban planning in ecology in landscape architecture or in early childhood or in middle childhood education you can go to the called ecological literacy So now, this ecological literacy is the theme of our investigation. Who, will, who we want to investigate on? How do middle childhood children understand or perceive about ecological literacy? Under the ecological literacy, what is the subject of it? Interspecific relationships. Okay? All right. Hold on. There's another thing here. When you want to discover, you must have a setting or a context or a straightness. I'm going to write that down so that you all okay. setting, context, straightness. Okay, setting, right? So for this setting, where can we have it? In the urban neighborhood, you can have on roadside trees. You can have in urban parks where there are trees in playground. So that is a setting. However, if you go outside the city, perhaps in the nearby village, this setting is not only the house yard, not only the house garden, but it can extend into orchard. It can extend into ditches, parade, for which one of my students is about to complete her PhD on landscape ecolo ecological literacy. So therefore, we have a setting. We have unit of analysis. We have a subject which is called ecological literacy. Under this ecological literacy, we define it for the interspecies relationship of ecosystem uh, do you all follow me thank you uh -huh. when you follow me i'm going to pose you another question hold on right uh, don't be afraid it's uh, this one i don't give great to you all right yeah however uh here 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 as you go along uh, this is where this is it this is what you define in your research proposal, guys, should not be just carved on the stones, in the stone. You can evolve it. I repeat, you can evolve it. At first, you look the garden, orchard, roadside planting, sangri forest in the rural area as setting. However, as you evolve, in the method to investigate how middle childhood children understand ecological literacy, that time of involvement, your engagement in data collection may change the setting into context. Why? It takes time for children to understand this, but after that, they get attached to it, and then they teach others their younger friends, buddies, on what is equal to the sea. Therefore, the setting has changed into context. Meaning that when you're going to spell out the title of your thesis, 
in the beginning, research proposal is spelled setting. However, when it's spelled in your thesis, you use context. That is where a thesis comes. You understand? Understand? Okay. Uh, yang nganggur ni bagus ni. Okay. No halinda ni setahun nganggur. Okay, bagus. Okay. Now, I want you all to write in the chat. To write in the chat one sentence. What is the title of this thesis? Okay. One sentence. What is the title of this thesis? Okay. Okay, you can write it now. After this, I think the moderator, I think Nora, can compile it. Then you can see it everywhere. Okay, don't don't be afraid that it's wrong. It's not. It, well, when we teach research, uh, we don't point this wrong. This is right. No, we should not do, do that. Okay, particularly when the research is an exploratory. Okay, this research. I think is an exploratory research. Okay, I'm going to write that, that down. Okay, exploratory. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I know you know what? Can you see this? Papa. Exploratory, right? So therefore, much of the question you begin with, why? What is meant by exploratory? When you cross over to look at Creswell, Patton, Miles and Huberman, Danzin, Kumar, Louis, many other textbooks on research methodology, you will see that Exploration can be defined in many ways. One of the meaning of exploration that the things you yourself do not know why. So you like to know what is an, what is this ecological literacy for middle child children. Therefore, you explore. Therefore, you post question. Where do you put your question in your thesis? It can begin as early in your introduction. Yeah, no kidding. This research question why can be divided into two groups: the prime questions and the sub questions. Okay, right. The prime questions are the one that you post in your chapter one after you define your research problem and gap. Then you define it the research question. Come to the gap. Uh, here are the gap, guys. Does anybody do the research on ecological literacy on middle childhood children in orchard in every landscape of a village in Malaysia? Perhaps you are the first one. You see? Therefore, this research in the discipline of landscape architecture, for example, it can be a new Research. It does has a gap. However, guys, if you bring this to education, let's say middle childhood education, in the education faculty, this may not be a new. But however, it can be new when you put into the straightness, the settings. It can be new that these settings will change into context. Right? Uh, that is the gap. Gap is not necessarily that it's something new people doesn't touch. No. You can change the unit analysis. It points to one gap. You can change, alter, or move to another setting or context. That is another. You can change the aim of study. That is another gap. So gap itself is not just on the context gap. It can be a method gap. It can be a one contextual, two method. It can be the knowledge gap. 
Nobody understands this yet. Where? In Malaysia. Because our ecological system is way different from others. How different is that? From one of my student PhD thesis, she found that in Peninsula Malaysia, not in Sabah, not in Sarawak, in Peninsula Malaysia alone, we have 15 species of plantain squirrel, the highest in the world. Yes, squirrels in North America, United States, plus Canada, that's only five species. In Malaysia, we have 15 hamastash. That is abundant. But that is a new knowledge you come in. So therefore, this is PhD. It looks like ordinary, but as you put into the method, then it becomes extraordinary. It becomes a new knowledge. Therefore, here, how do we going to find the ecological learning literacy of the middle childhood children, middle childhood children? There you need this exploration. You need to have method. The methods can be called field observation. The methods can be called phenomenology. The method be, can be called hands-on experience. The method can be called direct experience. It's up to you. Because why I use all this term? One author, Treswell, may not seem as patent. Another author, Dr. Nuzalina, may not be the same as Dr. Mazlina. So which one that you choose, you debate it, which one should you appropriate to your study. That is where the debate comes. If you cut and paste, that is masters. If we debate it, why that study appropriate to your, because you construct your own method, that is PhD. You got it, guys? Yes, no? Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Let's go. Okay, now already 30 minutes. Okay, guys, uh, we're going to have a rest now. So, therefore, uh, don't go away. You cannot rest. I'm going to show you another one interlude. So, Dr. Mazlina is going to show you one interlude. Meanwhile, I'm going to shift my webcam, logic tag webcam into another whiteboard. I'm going to shift it into another whiteboard. Okay, Dr. Mazina, hit it. Uh, Dr. Mazina, I show the interlude. Yeah, hang on, hang on, bro. Hang on, bro. Can you see this? Uh, no, yeah, doctor. Did I share it with you? Yes, yes, yes. Can see. Okay. Okay. Can you see it now? Yes. Yeah. Can. Can, doctor. Writing's not that easy, but Grammarly can help. This sentence is grammatically correct. Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, do you get one matter in the presentation pattern of regularity? What is the pattern of regularity of hermit crab? What is the pattern of regularity of hermit crab?
Uh, I want to answer, guys. If you stand in front of your classroom on a grad, student do not answer, you felt not nice, right? I'm going to show it here. Pattern of the gravity. Can you all see? Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. So, what is the pattern of regularity of hermit crab? Please. Not sure, bro. Hey, come on. I give, give give an answer. If the answer is wrong, you are right. If you don't give answer, then you are wrong. Uh, give, give me a second to think. Uh, uh, the, uh, others, I could not, uh, there are 35 uh, audience here. So can others uh, answer this? What is the pattern of regularity of, of regularity of hermit crabs? I'm going to use this very often after this. Rock development? Say, say it again. Kind of, kind of development, you know, perkembangan, something oh, like that. Rock, huh? development, okay, that's one. Uh, yes, but not accurate. Okay, yes, but not accurate. Okay, try it another. Prof. Yeah, go ahead. About the Q in the irregular way. Q in regular way. That is one. That is pattern of regularity, right? The change shell, right? Change shell, right? Yes, the change shell. Why do you change, change shell, shells? Because their body grows. Therefore, they need, need a bigger shell, right? So that is the pattern of regularity of hermit crab. They change shells. You would you say that that title of the thesis, if it's the term thesis, because hermit crab change shells, can no. be a title? No. Uh, why no, Paris? Go ahead, Paris. Because uh, everybody knows that the pattern of the regularity is like like changing the. I mean, every everyone knows that that thing is happening. Yeah, uh, do, is this the first time you know that hermit crab uh, change shells? Uh, this is my first time actually. Yeah, so that's not not everyone. You are wrong then. Okay. <laughs> okay. What I'm trying to say, we go back to just now curiosity, exploration, and discovery on interspecies relationship, right? Mutualism, disparatism, paradigm, commensalism, right? So we are looking at pattern of regularity. Interspecies relationship in what context? Ecological literacy. In what sweetness? In a village. For whom is it? Middle childhood children. So we are PhD is about, I repeat, determining determine, determinations of pattern of regularity. You go to in all disciplines, the same thing. Okay. I was reading. Uh, I was reading a book by Osman Baka, which on classification Islamic knowledge, right? Uh, his thesis is published long time ago. Perhaps you are not born, 1992, right? But the validity of the knowledge that he revealed in a thesis, looking at three prominent scholars, Al-Farabi, Al-Ghazali, I forgot one more, sorry. I forgot the, the third one, yeah. That is a pattern of regularity of, of regularity that shows that Al-Farabi has a different viewpoint from Al-Ghazali. That is the pattern that she look at, he is looking at, the differences of classification of Islamic knowledge. You see, the pattern does not always fall into commonalities the pattern can also fall into differences. That is the pattern. Okay? 
Therefore, when people ask you, Paris, in one sentence, what is your thesis? You need to tell what's your title of thesis, which shows the pattern of regularity, which points to the pattern of regularity. Okay, all right. So now I like Dr. Mazlina. Show the yes, slide. Bro. Show the slides. Show the slide, yeah. Uh, you all can see me here clearly. Now I'm in the another whiteboard. Yes, sir. Clear, yes, clear. Good, good, good. Uh, Mazlina, go ahead and pause yeah. the slides. Yeah, hang on, bro. All right, guys, now I'd like you all to note down in your notepad or any scratch paper that you have, what are the new words that you learn from this engagement? Or uh, perhaps you learn on pattern of regularity. All right, when I show you just now on curiosity, that points at that will lead to exploration that will end up with discovery. Actually, I got it from the literature of many of my students who are doing or who did and are doing now research on child friendly environment. This is the same thing. Students are curious, then they explore the outside world and then they discover new things. So that's you. If you were to use this pattern, I'm not saying that the pattern, this one pattern, curiosity points to exploration, ends up with discovery, I think you'll be on the right track. All right? So therefore, I would like to share this lecture here so that I hope that you all can complete your thesis with your eagerness. And your engagement, direct engagement with your thesis within six to seven semesters. Because, as mentioned by Dr. Zalina, she finishes three years and two months on the dot. Three years, two months on the dot. Okay? All right. I'm going to skip these slides. I'm going to go to the last slide. Zalina, last slide. <coughs> All right. That's slide. Can you enlarge it a bit? Okay. Thank you. Okay. I like to show this because this was done by my student Ashad Abu Bakar from Ilori Central Nigeria, which is part of the savannas of the in Nigeria nations. Okay. And her research is on traditional public space in Yoruba, which is the third or second largest ethnic in Nigeria. It is called Ojude. Therefore, we're not going to use traditional public space. We're going to use Ojude. Why is that? English cannot replace, traditional public space cannot replace Ojude because Ojude is a cultural place, not a playground, more than a playground. Okay, this is what she discovered. Okay. Therefore, she explored using method of at least two methods. One interview the children, 450 of them. Many of the interview are group interview, structured interview. And then also, sorry, uh, survey questionnaire. 
children with their parents, 450, if you're not mistaken. Then interview, then interview adults. Okay, there are many, several, more than one method that she applied and found this. Okay. She found that Ojude is not just a play space. Ojude is where they learn Arabic language, which is taught by the Malam. Malam in Yoruba scholars in a nearby madrasa surrounding with the residences, yeah, the Ojude. So therefore, in geographical term, Ojude is a nucleus. Uh, here come the word come out, nucleus. Where are you going to display it? In your conclusion, Ojude is a nucleus. Playground is not a nucleus. That's why, that, that's why you cannot use public of traditional traditional public space. You need to use Ojude. All right. And when they hear the Arabic lessons, they all besides that there is a mosque for which their children do pray there. However, being children, they are curious. They like to set their own way. They build their own mimic mosque, a uh, mini mosque. It is a mosque made from clay blocks and stones. Who did it? The children of seven to twelve years old. And they prayed in that mimic mosque without walls, without roof. So this is where the self of control happened. They get. For which that there is part of the 10 dimension of child friendly environment qualities stipulated in 2007 by Horili. So she able to bring four of the principles by Horili into her research. That is where her research stands. But the research shows another trajectory. Because Ojude, at night time, the Malam, during the daytime, the Malam will tell about Arabic lesson. At night time, they tell tales during the moonlight. I repeat, during the moonlight. And these tales allow children to be more, put themselves into more imaginations. That's not, not, not happened in playground. Designed by Faris or designed by Halinda. Yes. This is designed by the children themselves. Why? One, they have sense of control. Two, they manifest their own boundary. Three, they learn social skills. All these are in textbook. All these are in literature. Since when? 1970s. But when she put it into her context, see context, not a setting anymore, it changed from the just a physical dimensions from a space into a context. It is a play space. A place, it is a place, sorry, it is a place. Therefore, when children of Yoruba present themselves, interact, socialize in, in Ojude, they see the Ojude as their own place. That is the conclusion of the study. You got it? Yes, no, guys? Yes, yes. Bro. Yes. Yes. yes it, is it is it obvious? Aha. Uh -huh. Is it obvious? Or is it dubious? I'm I'm going to write down the, the word obvious and here here at the corner here. Obvious and dubious. Is it obvious? Yes or no? Oh, what 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 happened? Where I I've written it. Uh, oh oh oh. Uh, Doctor Mazlina. Uh, yes. I'm I'm a different different board name. Not that, that, that board. Uh, So I have to stop sharing, bro. Uh, yes yes. We stop sharing. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mazlina. Thank you. <clears throat>
Uh, let me have a sip of water. <coughs> You got it? Yeah? Can you all pin your, your own? So what is it obvious? <coughs> or is it dubious? Uh, I want answer. Uh, not really obvious. Zaid, Zaid, I want to hear your sweet voice. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, Zaid, why you say it's not obvious? What, 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 what have you written just now, Zaid? N not really obvious. Why it's not really obvious? Ah. Uh, it seems to me not really that clear. Aha. Uh -huh. Meaning, not, what, which part is not clear? Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> Um, maybe uh, the way how they are trying to connect, um, how to understand, how to say, uh, the way how they are trying to connect um, uh, the project itself uh, into the humans, maybe? Uh, I'm confused what you're on. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I want to ask another person. I, I'm confused <laughs> with your, 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 your oh. illustration. Yeah. Okay, okay, bro. Okay, how about Shamia Abdelgani? Uh, are you here with us? Yes. Sorry, Prof. I'm not uh, follow to detail about that one. That okay. subject. Okay. How about Kamarul, Arshad? <laughs> uh, do not follow too? Huda, <laughs> uh, uh, exit from the meeting. Okay. As you wish. Okay. How about Adila? Guys, I'd like to hear from you. How about with that? <clears throat> uh, okay, Prof, I think that um, it's quite uh, obvious because uh, the mm. space is created, uh, connected mm. to the most the religious building. Um, mm. I, I love the answer. This is what Asha has gone through. So, in initial study, here come guys. Uh, this is where evolutions of your study. In your first two semesters, it, took, it looks this way. But as she go further, until she reach, I think now is the first seventh semester. She's about to submit another 10 days, right? She found that it changed from obvious because her children was running in the OGD almost every day. But through investigation, it became dubious why some of the children at least some or sometimes in most of the children have in the OGD itself is open yet they create their own secret place for adults researcher like Ashad who see children play not in one OGD many OGD she has eight, six samples altogether look at one OGD to another, they can find where are the favorite place. This favorite place, example, the mini, the mini mosque that they construct. And where the adult teach them how to weave using a traditional weaving machine from timber, right? Those are the favorite place. But within that places, they have their own secret place, a dubious one. Why? What is secret place? That parents do not know. Does this definition fit to the other literature? True, it fits to Chataji 2005. It fits before that, Pierre Christensen 2002. Now you see, meaning that what she found actually has a pattern of regularity found in 2002, 2005, then by Chala 2007, further on. So there's a pattern. 
that children do have secret place. They have a secret place regardless they are in New York City, regardless they are in Papua New Guinea or here, regardless in Ilori, Nigeria, in the Savannas. Ah, this is where new knowledge comes in. It begins with obvious by Asia. It ends up with dubious. She revealed in her discussion and then she summarized it. Uh, she concluded in the conclusion. To me, it will be a beautiful piece. Yeah. Therefore, guys, if you begin your research with obvious, don't be distracted if you say, ah, this is obvious, people know it. No. Your method will make it new. Your method will make it you reach your novelty. Why? Methodological gap. Yeah? For the children to scrape, to have secret place, it's nothing new. As I said just now, 2002, Pierre Christensen from Denmark. Nothing new. But Ashad able to evolve it, change it in Ojude Ilori. Ilori is a city, right? Therefore, she revealed that the children has secret place. And the secret place, obviously, not the same as children in Copenhagen, in Oslo, Helsinki, New York, but it's different in Ilori. That is a thesis. You got it? Guys, you got it? Yes, no? Yes, clear. Yes, yes sir. Okay, uh, yes. Adina, uh, speak out. Uh, what do you want to ask? Uh, sorry, Comprof. Uh, talking about uh, exploratory research uh, just now, uh, how about the, the the finding or the result of the, of the research? Because uh, based on my uh, reading, if I'm not mistaken by Costello and Osborne said that uh, yes, we do the investigative the problem that is not clearly defined and different in terms of the methods that we defined it, but uh, this is uh, not provide a conclusive result. So how about the quality of the research? What, what say you? Uh, it is a conclusive because you found that children in Elori they did not only play during the day, they also play at night because they hear tales from the moonlight in, in, in the moonlight by the Malam. That doesn't happen in, in other places. Here, when we look at exploratory research, guys, okay, listen here, from exploratory research, some, you, some, at the end, you may jump into another, which is called explanatory research. Yeah. So in order to do this explanatory research, you need to do experiment, right? I shared the six sets of experiment in six or today. So therefore, there's always intermingle between exploratory that it ends up with exploratory. What that is support by experimentation. That's it. Uh, where are you going to do this? Uh, that is why when you read research methodological book, you need to see example. Don't just read pattern crash well. That's it. They don't give deep example. Examples come from thesis. Examples from, come from good quality paper, right? Example, children's geography, right? So in my in my area of discipline. So my students do read on children's geography, okay? So yeah, so therefore we, in research, we need this, okay? Okay, hold on guys, I'm going to tell in the story of Asia. Uh, I did heard from Dr. Mazina that uh, many of you all uh, sometimes uh, do, sometimes you pop up, sometimes you silent, right? Uh, similar to my student, particularly Malaysian student, my international student, they usually complete their PhD within six to seven semesters. And many of them get good results, excellent. So much so, guys, for this, for Asia. In the first week of May, she flew back from Ilori because she was absent from face to face with me. I'm the course wiser, I'm not the main wiser. Therefore, her problem is over there. The electricity supply is not consistent. It's not like ours. Our TNB is good. Over there, the corruption is beyond imagination. 
And then it, the Wi-Fi sometimes yes, sometimes no. So you have two problems. So difficult to really to have conversation. Number three, seven hours different. 9 a.m. I set my discussion with my student here is 2 a.m. over there. Therefore, that's a big, big uh, problem of this uh, time difference. She get money to come back. She in her seventh semester, this semester, and scholarship is out, gone. Therefore, Lockdown, reach here, lockdown in KL for two weeks, quarantine. Come here, cannot go to the campus because campus is blocked. And still cannot see me face to face. Eventually, she able to come to see me. See me. Then we have met, I think, four times face to face in my office. Uh, I, see, I, see, I, see, I, see, I said just now that I have to sacrifice my time here because there's nobody in, in the campus. Truly, I'm not kidding now. I'm the only one. I, academic, there are some yeah, cleaners, uh, the one who the janitors that walk around to clean this, the floor, right? Okay. You bring he, her over and we discuss what you see just now. Uh, Dr. Mazin, I can show it now again. <clears throat> Number off. uh this is not the, the slides yeah the, this is a slide bro oh, oh okay sorry thank you bro. okay 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 so she construct this i think more than one hour with the help of, of another clip of her from nigeria of the kabiru so we're able to construct this and i found that as what i read just now wow her research actually points a new the, the, the world is so vividly clear, so thinly clear, lovely. Well, I was, uh, so one of the words that I learned from her is passive surveillance. This one I did not come across yet. It happened yeah, in her word, passive surveillance. Wow, this is such a beautiful thing. All right. But guys, compared to you all who she has sacrificed in order to take, to pay for her flight ticket, Ethiopian, Ethiopian airline to reach KL, from Addis Ababa, right? She fly from Lagos to Addis Ababa, Addis Ababa to KL, right? Twice more expensive than before because the plane is half capacity. Then lockdown, another 2,000 ringgit gone. Come here by bus, yeah, all those expenses, and to pay to Chimpis. She has to sell her land. Dia jual tanah dia just to sacrifice herself to come here leaving four children with her husband if you think that your journey is difficult i know halinda nothing compared to asia nothing but the beauty of her sacrifice is exquisitely excellent pattern of regularity of children playing in Ojibwe. i repeat exquisitely excellent pattern of regularity showing how Children's play in for today. No other thesis in this world spell like what she did. Beautiful. That is the flowers, the fruit of her sacrifice. So PhD guys, it's always sacrifice. You got it? Uh, any question you'd like to ask? <clears throat> yeah, now it's already what? more than a one hour <clears throat> okay no question remember in the chat i need you all to write the title of curiosity exploration discovery on middle childhood on ecological literacy right okay uh, dr Marina, go to the second slide <clears throat> second page bro is that yeah. so yeah yeah uh, next page Mm. Uh, Dr. Nina, uh, yes. the, the, the second slide, uh, there's one quote I like to student to. <clears throat> the quote, yeah? Uh, yeah, the, the, the second slide. Sorry, second. Okay. Uh, can someone read the, sec the, the quote down there? Uh, 
Someone read it. You will see the rainbow after the storm has passed. Yes. Ashad has gone through big storm. But last Thursday, he sees, she saw her rainbow. She was smiling at me. I was, but when she tell me her story, how she come here to put up expenses, that really shocked me. That is a big, big sacrifice, selling her own, own land. Okay, next slide. <coughs> <coughs> okay, you see, when you, deep, when you do PhD, you must find a novelty. This is by no other than Dr. Maslina. Okay, so now I'd like to call upon Dr. Maslina. What is the novelty that you display in this? This is the slide of her PhD viva. This is the finding, the conclusion, right? Go ahead, Dr. Maslina. Yeah, uh, for me, uh, yeah, this one is 10 years ago, bro. <laughs> Inshallah, I try to, <laughs> I try to uh, explain it. Yeah, um, my study is uh, on green infrastructure network. Um, that can uh, benefits uh, that can give uh, well-being to uh, residents in a small town so i found that uh, there are few uh, attributes that can be achieved uh, in terms of well-being by by the resident that is uh, through diversity naturalness uh, coherence and also other additional attributes so i've uh, put a, like a, a framework uh, to show the the uh, the sub attributes from these uh, four at, uh, attributes that uh, the residents uh, in a small town in Taiping uh, can achieve uh, well-being in terms of their physical, their uh, psychological as well as their social well-being. So that's uh, the the summary of uh, this uh, diagram actually. Thank you. Uh, there's another slide for which there is also of the conclusion. Go to the next slide. <coughs> okay, can you explain this? Okay, uh, so uh, this is actually the, the final uh, models that I came up uh, for the framework of uh, the well-being. Okay, through uh, this uh, uh, integration of um, uh, physical uh, interaction, and kinetic activities uh, where the residents um, participated in uh, various types of uh, green infrastructure. Green infrastructure is all kinds of uh, greenery uh, and open spaces in a small uh, town. I have, uh, I did the typology of uh, those types of uh, spaces. Uh, when, uh, when there are these attributes, uh, of naturalness, diversity, coherence, uh, the residents can do their, uh, can have their physical interactions and kinetic activities, and then they can also have uh, cognitive uh, interaction and social okay. interaction. On. Yes. I'm going to ask you here, because this is related to the nature of literature review that you have done. Where do we get this coherence, diversity, naturalness? Is it reflect to your literature review? Uh, most definitely, Prof. Okay. So, can, you, can you give example some of the authors? Uh, uh, mostly, uh, the, uh, the literature review that I've explored uh, consists of um, uh, theories regarding uh, people connection with nature. And at the same time, uh, I look into uh, attributes uh, uh, various types of attribute uh, in terms of people connection with the natural environment, whether it is in a, uh, especially in an urban setting. So, okay. uh, uh, so that attributes, yes. those attributes are the, the sub-parameters variable or the main variable? Uh, the, 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 the naturalness, diversity, coherence are the uh, main variable. Thank you. The sub-variables are? Uh, sub variables are many like for example um, uh, view, um, uh, for, for example in terms of uh, familiarity uh, okay, so th this is guys when you do research 
you will drown in literature review. You thought that you need to measure tons of uh, many numerous of variables. Your research should fall into the scope of study. Therefore, what I'm asking Dr. Mazina to review her scope study, for which that she has these first three prime parameters. In that one of them, each of them has their own sub. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, you see, these are the things. These are the things that you have to reveal it in beginning in your literature review, but much clearer when you define it in your research methodology because you have to elicit, you have to measure the variable. From there, you don't consider sub early or prime. It's all needed to be measured. Right? Therefore, I have students who discovered in the beginning 29 variables, but eventually she, she ended up with only four. For which that she scoped her study on that. Why? PhD is not solving the world problem. PhD is not a rocket science. PhD is just a process of understanding how to define a problem, construct a method to reach solution. Is it? Three years is enough. Okay, uh, next slide, please, Dr. Nazar. <coughs> so it's not a breakthrough. Yeah? If you feel that you want to have cutting edge, you don't study in your age. You go to MIT. Because if you don't, if you don't produce cutting edge study in MIT, you will not allow to enter. Because why? They pay you 100%. If you study in Stanford, in Stanford, if you don't put, you don't produce one of the sub of the sub of the cutting edge study, you cannot enter in Stanford because why? They pay hundred percent your tuition fees, and of course their laboratory is superly good, and of course they have many supervisors to assist you across the board, right? But PhD is about being analytical. Analytical begins. In your chat, how you pro how you define your problem, how you construct your gap, analytical, more so how you debate references A, how relate to B, A and B relate to C, A and B relate to D, then A and B C D relate to your research. I repeat, relate to your research. That's analytical. Then you pose a question: Why does children? What do children do or learn when they're outside? How does this relate to ecological literacy? That is critical thinking, guys. We need that. Therefore, critical thinking does not only appear in your discussion, but it begins to grow, to emerge, to pop up in your literature review. If your literature review doesn't do this, Literature review actually is analytical bibliography, not in PhD. You can do it in masters. Never ever put in your PhD. Yeah, all right. Therefore, here back to Asha, she did sacrifice a lot, leaving her family, four children. Yeah. Next slide. <clears throat> yeah, this one putting yourself. Yeah, into new ideas, right? PhD is not only may not solving just a dubious problem, as I gave you just now, right? On Ojude, yeah, it can be an obvious inquiry, or, or it can begin with an obvious inquiry, it ends with a dubious one, and you have answered to it. I repeat, it can begin with an obvious one. It ends through your analysis. Yeah, then it ends with a dubious one. Then you have answer to it. The answer is no word. That is your contribution on your thesis. Next. <clears throat> okay, can someone read this for me? <clears throat> Only the first, yeah, the first, yeah. Can someone? The PhD journey, uh, PhD study is tough because it is a place for hard facts. It requires yes. a question. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. 
See that? Hold on. Eat a, a taste hot, hot facts. Where do you get these facts? Your experimentation. Your field experimentation. Right? Using valid and reliable method of data collection. You analyze it using valid method. Let's say in vivo for content analysis, SPSS, SEM, MOS for the quantitative analysis. Then you come up with results. Those results are facts, right? But it remains facts in tables and figures. That does not end there. Yeah. It's just, yeah. But then you begin to interpret it. And here come the critical thinking again. Interpretations of result in tables or figures, right? Will point to the, your, that's your interpretation. It will reveal your finding. That's yours. Okay, I'll continue reading. It requires passion. It, it, it requires passion to solve a difficult problem. Yes. You need to be passionate. So hold this word, passionate. The problem is difficult. It's not easy. It's very tough. It's a tough nut not to crack. It's a tough because you need facts. Facts, that's why we, we call it the empirical investigation. What is empirical? You have your own evidences. You are not like politicians, yeah, who says words that he doesn't believe in. No, we have evidences. Yeah, in the universities, we show you to be a truthful person because we have evidences. Why? Accumulation of facts. You synthesize it, it points to truth. I repeat, accumulation of facts, you synthesize it, it ends up with truth. We are not politicians. We are science. Yeah? We are science people. People with. Okay, proceed. Go ahead. At most time, the problem is obvious. It can be an obvious one too. The journey is not heavy when the researcher is consistent in his strength to achieve the genuine solution. The end uh -huh. is yes. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. Hold on. So this the word consistent put into your heart now, because I did ask many click of mine uh, when they when I ask him what do you advise your your student? I give them three words. Consistent, consistent, consistent. Yes. Be consistent. How to do this? Uh, here come one other practical thing. You can ask Dr. Maslina. You can ask Dr. Zumahiran if you met him in Kaid. You can ask, I think Dr. Zalina is with you. Uh, Zalina, are you with us now? Uh, yes. Uh, Zalina? Yes, 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 uh, okay. yes. You can ask her. Eight hours a day. By this week, okay, this is consistent. Okay, let me tell a story of Dr. Mazina. <clears throat> they, she would depart from URA from, yeah, I think it's early, very early in the morning to reach UTM, to reach UTM before 11. Then take bus, sometimes she drove after five. That's once a week. Five, uh, five days a week, eight hours a day. I'm not kidding, guys. I'm not kidding. Okay. After high raya, the first high raya in her first semester, uh, first year. Uh, correct if my my story is wrong, eh, Dr. Madina. This is what I experienced. Yes. I still remember it, and I keep on preaching this to others. <clears throat> I still remember it too, bro. <laughs> Even though it is eleven After years ago. She, came, she spent seven days, seven days, and she called me. Her voice is different. Her voice, she was so worried. I think she was in tears because she forgotten what actually when she, where she stopped and how to warm up the engine. Yes, 
that is where PhD is. It, it loses you very fast. Therefore, if you're not consistent, ah, here comes the consistent, right? You will lose it. For the next hundred years, he spent only three days. I'm not kidding. True, bro. Yeah, it's, I'm not kidding. This is a true story. That's a sacrifice. So therefore, all these uh, ticky-tacky things, right? Like Majlis uh, Anak Sedara Bersunat. Go, just ignore it. I'm not kidding. Because nobody cares about your thesis. Nobody understands what is not even your husband or your, 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 not even your spouse. You are the one who knows it in depth. You are the one who is on the track. And each every day, you want to have one step forward. Even the step is micro step. What? After reading, you're only able to construct for that particular five sentences. Sometimes only one sentence. It happened to many of my students. This is PhD. Right? Therefore, you need to have this sacrifice. The next slide, please. <clears throat> uh, uh, can you make it bigger, Mazina? Ah, uh, someone can read. Uh, so here is pattern of regularity. This, this is definition. Can someone read it? Positivism. Life is not really chaotic or random, but has logical and persistent patterns of regularity. Yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. More. Continue. Positivism is a specific inquiry that concerns with the study of patterns rather than exceptions. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Here, here comes. See, you study at patterns. Let's say, example, that you come up with a uh, your pattern when you okay take example when my student example Janaton she studied on these children's of Baja Opian in Pulau Bumbun how does the interaction went with the seascape with the houses on steel for which that much of the children's behavior are determined by the type and by the cycle of the moon this one is beautiful, but the cycle of the moon. No research done yet, yet, yet on it. And also the type. She found it of Baja Ubian children. So therefore, she studied this pattern. But there are some also exceptions. So if you were to study in quantitative way, quantitative, exception, we call it as outliers. So in quantitative way, you can ignore it. You are right. However, Janatun did the quality way, phenomenology, right? And also, instead of using positivism, ah, here, guys, this is important here. I learned this from Janatun. Instead of just positivism, meaning that when A plus B, it must be can C. No, no. But constructivism is the first. It evolved, as I said just now, okay? From setting, it changed to contact. It evolved. That's constructivism. But constructivism has changed, at least in child-friendly environment research. Since 2018, it's changed to interpretivism. So I learned about interpretivism. So instead of she begins with constructivism, but at the end of her nine or 10 semester, she just submitted a thesis last week for Waiwa, it changed to interpretism. And yet, in interpretism, you cannot ignore outliers. Exceptions is also important. Therefore, when you guys, you confront with people who are so absorbed by quantitative, and you're in quantitative mode, your interpretism, they are in positivism, don't talk to them, you're the because they won't agree with you especially the engineers, right? Therefore, stick to your track. But you know it will lead to the rainbow. Okay? All right. So I already uh, defined what's constructivism. So you can skip the next one. Okay, can you go next slide, please? <clears throat> All right. 
Example here, this is one good example by one of my students, my second student, Dr. Zumahiran. Her research actually is, to me, is interesting because like this. If you look at this, it's about wood carving, right? Perhaps uh, outright, you say that she has to go to this house of Rumah Abdul Rahim in Terengganu and bring the measuring tapes, climb the wall using ladders, measure every single one of it, take photos, then analyze the photo using tools, the modern, the most recent tools and so forth. You thought that way. No, she didn't do it. She did not do that. Why is that? Ah, here come to the ingenuity of her method. She found that there are huge collection of measured drawing in Center of Excellence, Kalam, UTM. It originates 1976. So this huge number of drawings on Kelantan and Terengganu houses. But it's just reports, zero analysis. Therefore, here comes to her data. So therefore, she take those data with the permission of Kalam of 31 houses, Kelantan and Terengganu, and analyze this data using her own method. I think the next slide is on that method. Okay, you think she constructs her own method. Therefore, what is her novelty? Is it the this drawing? No, this one she, she got it from others. But the novelty is in her method. So she fulfilled the gap of methodological gap. That is a PhD. Next. Ah, here, that's it, I got it, yeah. This is how she, she, she it took long time she to interpret this, okay? Yeah, hundreds of carvings, but she analyzed it to fall into one pattern of regularity. Okay, when she got this, she need to apply another method, verification. Therefore, having this knowledge, from the measured drawing of 31 houses, carefully measured by diploma student in UTM for decades. She used it, analyzed it, then she made a verification. To the experts, six wood covers. Out of six, three, already, three of them already died now. This verification, so her method verification is a part of her method to verify that whether what the wood presence living wood covers did fall to this. Some has similarities, some differences. So what should she do with the differences? She debate both. Ah, because PhD, you tell what it is. Do not be biased. It should not be what it should be. I repeat, you tell what it is, ignore what it should be. If you bias from the start, there's it. An examiner can catch you. Now, tell what it is. Why there are these differences? Why there are these similarities? The agony, here come the task that she has to go through. It's not easy to get verification because most of the work covers are much engaged with the work and they don't have time for you. But apparently, with he, her own toxic, tactile way, she able to ask one Mustafa instead of two hours, one Mustafa give her two days. Tunggu long, yeah, longer than she expected. In Bahas in Lorak Kelantan, change to Bahasa Melayu, change to English. Three months. To analysis alone that text verbatim. Yeah, that rhetorics uh, of uh one Mustafa to Tukulong, Nor Haza Nodding, and three others, I forgot the name now, 
right? It takes her three months. However, that verification is so sharp. Substantiate her research that she found in the merged run. Triangulate them, triangulate them, and she revealed in her discussion and the conclusion. Voila, she got her place too. Okay, so guys, it's all about sweat. Don't try to make a shortcut in PhD. If you do it, surely, you, you watch my word, surely the examiner will cut you short in the exam. There's no such shortcut in finding the truth. Getting a fact is one, analytical. But what we want you to rebuild it, especially in your discussion, that also end up in your conclusion is your critical thinking skill. This is where the examiners are looking at. And when you end up with a good PhD, you come back to let's say teaching in your universities, you see the world as a scholar in a different way because your, your skill of being critical is different. This is the training of PhD. I believe it's because uh, from my 33 PhD graduate, including Dr. Mazina, Dr. Zumaira, and Dr. Zalina Harun, I learned that from them, how critical they are. Okay, guys, uh, next slide, please. Uh, we are in two, more than one hour, 30 minutes, okay? More than one, one hour and a half hours. Uh, next slide, please. Not working. <laughs> it's uh, pausing. Hang on, eh? <coughs> oh, they hang, lah, bro. Yeah. Uh. <coughs> Jad, saya stop sharing Jad, Prof, ya? Yes, yes. Sebab dia yeah. lama sangat kot agaknya. <coughs> okay, can you see that, Prof? Uh, yes, uh, I think I want to skip this one. It's okay, I want to skip this one. <coughs> All right, uh, <clears throat> guys, um, I would like you all to hold two terms. Uh, can you all write in your word, in your note, logical rhetorics, logical rhetorics. Second, logical sequence. You got it? Yeah. Uh, like, I, I don't want to erase this because this one, I think the, the last thing I'm going to explain to you all, I go right here. I'm going to erase obvious and dubious. <coughs> uh, can you all see here? Hello? Right? Can you all see this here? Logical rhetorics and logical sequence? Yes, Prof. Yeah, good. Okay. <clears throat> rhetorics is your text. Yeah. In your document, your thesis. But it's also your verbal when you present to someone, let's say of a sudden you meet Dr. Ramsey along the corridor, then they ask you, um, uh, with that, uh, what is in your thesis? Uh, what is in your hand? Oh, it's my thesis, Dr. Ramzi. Uh, uh, Ramzi. Uh, give, give me three minutes. He was so excited. That is called logical rhetorics, right? You need to explain this. You need to share your, your, your outcome when you complete your PhD. This is beautiful, I think. But then in your thesis, there are many chapters, at least five, at least five, right? From introduction until the conclusion, right? Therefore, each of one is tied up together, correct? 
connected, right? Link, right? Okay. Therefore, you need to have a sequence. We call logical sequence. Not only that, in one chapter, one paragraph, let's say 2.1, must relate to 2.2. .2. When you reach 2.2, .2, it must relate with 2.1, then the, the, then the succeeding 2.3. This is called logical sequence. Why? PhD is a single story. Why? PhD is a single story, one story. Uh -huh. Therefore, guys, I would recommend you all, I, I'm not saying you should, okay, I would recommend you all to read storybooks. This is example, example, Uncharted Path. That's a good, that one, I took me only three hours to read it. It was, I was so absorbed to read it. Okay, of Lee Mumba. Lee Mumba, Lee Mumba, right? It's the president of Korea. <coughs> It's very good. Right? So therefore, the storyline is beautiful. Example one, not that the one I show here is a three cup of tea. It's old books, but it's still valid or to energize you or to motivate you to write one story. What is the three cup of tea? Uh, I like to review it now because it's happening now in Afghanistan. This is written before when Taliban was ruling in the 90s. Now Taliban come again. Yeah, I come again, Taliban, right? Uh, why is this so? Because there are seven lady Afghan students in UTM for which that I do support their meals. Okay. So therefore, this trip cup of tea is, to me, when I present it to my students, they really say, I, I think I'm going to write a good thesis. What is it? There's one guy, I forgot his name, American, who go to climb K2. Not the Everest. K2. Much deeper than the Everest. Degree of difficulty higher than the Everest to climb. He got sick and get stuck in during the climb. The other climbers couldn't help him to bring him down. So many of the Pashtun tried able to bring him down, then nurse him at their village. So when he opened his eyes after a long unconscious period, she opened, he opened his eyes and said, wow, how beautiful is this? These are people I thought that they were going to torture me but because I'm American, but they look me. So when he asked uh, one of the, uh, the the head of the tribe, he said that, why do you rescue me? The first thing he said that, replied by the head of the tribe, you are our guest. You are, you got your first cup of tea, he said to repay this big sacrifice by the Pashtun, he go back to Oklahoma, Nebraska, and collect donations. Able to collect about 10,000 US, and he built one school. Bring back, he built one school. Along the way, he was cheated by some gangsters, right? But then he able to build one school. Because when he were to leave, the village said to the I'm going back, I'm going to bring 10,000 to build one school for you. He did. So, he built more schools after that with his wife. His wife earns PhD and this guy doesn't even go to universities. So, both of them settled in Afghan and built many schools. Then come back the head of tribes. You are my friend. Because you built schools, not only for the boys, for the girls. Then he built more schools until reaching more than 100. Then the truck said, Now this is your third cup of tea. What he said, You are part of me. See? So this cup of tea, being a guest, be a friend, then be a part of me, it's a beautiful story. So, how, therefore, you, when you PhD, go and read. Therefore, because the moment you read, you know that the, 
the sequence of thought, how to reveal your thesis into one story. You got it? Okay, uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> Uh, I think this one uh, you can see, uh, read, 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 then write, write, write. Ah, here, never ever say that I'm going to only use my thesis on my own. Material of what I found from others. No, no, share it. Do your networking while you're doing your PhD. All right. Next. Ah, this one I mentioned just now. This being consistent, stay focused. Next. Ah, uh, Dr. Zalina, can you read that this quote? <clears throat> okay, Sulaiman Rahim. In doing PhD, the difficulty is not how to begin, but rather when to stop. Ah, uh, here is where when you happen to have students who are so engaged, he, she keep on. Yeah, this one lady that just submitted her research, Tanatun. She do not want to stop. Uh, here is time that you need to seek the opinion, the view, perspective of your supervisor. So tell me when I want to stop. If you reach this one, it's good, but you need to stop because you're not going to solve the whole problem. Okay? When it's enough, finito. Continue reading. You can only see the rainbow after the storm has passed. Yes. Just now I said to pull you the story about Ashad. She already see her rainbow last Thursday when she wrote the one that I've shown to you is now on my on my whiteboard. Next slide, please, and next quote, please. When it is dark enough, you will see the stars. Ah, yes. When you see you feel lost, don't worry. The all knower, our rock, will show you the light later on. That's why they're saying say that. Shoot for the moon. Even if you miss it, you will land among the stars. Next. Uh, this is one of my students. I'm not going to go to detail. Uh, go, go. Next. Next. Uh, uh, yeah, most of your, yeah, your, your, when you write this is first from complex to simple. I don't want to go to this. this one is more towards how to write thesis. Next. <clears throat> Uh, next. Uh, okay, can you go back? Sorry, sorry. Uh, can you go back? All right. This one researched by Janetun, as mentioned just now. She's the one that difficult when to stop. But she already submitted last week. So this research is so beautiful. How beautiful is it? Okay, here, can, here comes the story. She submitted a paper in children's geography. Uh, on... The title is simple. Able to swim, able to paddle. Then the next, uh, the subtitle, right? Able to swim, able to paddle. And the author, uh, the editor of Children's Geography, a professor from University of Nottingham, contact her directly, telling that, uh, go ahead and do the simple correction that you have to by the year. Your research is supremely new. Because why? Uh, here come context. On this, there's no people having the research done in developed countries, developing countries such as Malaysia, including insular population, people of the islands, and on children. So go ahead and, and complete. So complete it. See, in children's geography, the queue of submission or the queue of publication by Hellas and Francis, it takes three semesters for you to for your paper. After accepted by the editor, it takes three semesters to be published. But apparently, we found that after six days, she submitted her correction, it was published by Letter and Francis. Why? We presume that the editor asked the publisher, you jump the queue for her because this is a strictly good thesis on affordance level of coastal areas that is manifest in understanding children's sensibility towards natural environment. From here, I begin to learn from her the difference between sensibility and sensitivity. 
it took me three years to learn the, the, the difference between sensibility and sensi and sensitivity. Yeah, from her research. Next. <clears throat> next. <laughs> Uh, next, I, I don't, I'm going to jump here. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to tell, but this is not the research, but I'm going to tell how the journey of Dr. Amatara O. Abdullah. She is from Sana'a, but during the war in Yemen, she cannot collect data in Sana'a. Therefore, she went to this city called Shenyun which is bordering Oman. Therefore, she set up her apparatus and collect data for more than two months in the heat of 47 degrees centigrade. I repeat, 47 degrees centigrade. With her abaya, yeah, because, and she has to construct one-to-one -one scale the wind power on a restaurant next to the airport. Why? The only functional metrological station which she has to relate, correlate her data with the station's data. Right? Because it was during the war. So these are the things that she has to go through. You feel that you have gone through, it's compared to her, I think, incomparable. Not only that, before she was being, went to UN for two semesters, three times only able to see her supervisor. She quit from UM, come to UTM. Go to professor from architecture. I don't believe in biomimetric architecture. Go away. She come back to me. Because I used to supervise her during her master's. Then she said to me, sir, you just motivate me. I know what I'm doing. She did. Six Mr. Halas, Dr. Amitara Abdullah. Such a courageous lady. Beautiful. Beautiful journey. Next. <clears throat> Next. That is her, her experiment. Okay. Uh, uh, never, never mind. Next. This one is not important. Next. Uh, next. Okay. I think this is my last slide. Uh, in order to complete complete my PhD in six semester, how many hours a day that you should spend on my research? How many hours I said just now? Huh, eight hours, right? Okay. Uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> ah, okay. This is last slide. I, I said just now. All right, guys. Yes. So now, I'd like to go to the chat. Dr. Mazlina, tolong tunjuk chat tu, kita tanya, kita tahu apakah title yang about curiosity, exploration and discovery just now. Let's see the title. Do you all put your heart to it on this lecture? <coughs> oh, not yet, Prof. Tak ada siapa lagi. Tak ada siapa. Okay, tak apalah. Okay, never mind. So therefore, guys, uh, Oh, really? Okay. Can I see? Yeah, thank you. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Can I see? Because, uh, I know uh, she can, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Go, go ahead. Okay, can uh, I see? Relationship attributes of early child education and the learning environment. Okay. Oh, you, you missed the word ecological literacy. That is the subject. Uh, you need to, you, you put your subject first. And exploring study on ecological history to enhance. Uh, to, en I, to enhance. Yeah, hang on. I, I read it uh, for you, bro. Yeah. And exploratory study on ecological literacy to enhance environmental learning among middle childhood children in Malaysia by Aina. Okay. Are the context? Oh, no context. Yeah, uh, you, need, uh, you need to do context. Mm -hmm. This is uh, uh, an exploratory study. You, you do you, PhD is a, a, either exploratory, exploratory experiment or narrations, right? You don't say a narrative or no need. Straight away, what is the main subject? Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Therefore, therefore, 
when a reader see your title, the moment you write your title well, they can see that the beauty, the sense, the beauty of your thesis from the title alone. That is why when people ask you in one sentence, Bazina, what is your thesis? When you explain one sentence, that's it. He knows it. That you are a scholar. Okay. Okay. Thank you guys for this session. I hope that stay put on your journey. Never said I'm going to quit. Be very un-Islamic if you want to go to quit. Okay. Stay on. Why? The beauty of human beings that we are people of great beauty. Yeah? We are the people of truth. And we are the people of a sign, meaning that your journey is a part of your Ibadah, right? For which that you want to get this pleasure. Put it that way. Surely, he will bring you to the end. Right? Surely. But you have to put sweat to it. Yeah, it's not a free lunch. And there's no shortcuts. Okay? Go ahead with that. Inshallah, you will end it with it. When you end, the beauty of having that feeling is only you. Even your spouse don't understand it. No problem. But the moment you stand in front of your classes, lessons, you stand tall. Okay, you will able to reveal the facts of your lessons from lesson one until lesson 15 in the 15th week. At the end of 15 week, the student can see that the truth that you bring in the knowledge that you want to reveal. So where to begin it? Here in your PhD, where it is crystallizing your mind to be curious, go do the exploration and you discover that there are these facts that are able to crystallize into the truth. Therefore, you are people of a sign. Thank you, guys. Uh, Prof, uh, there, are, there are questions yeah, uh, that someone want to ask you. Okay, go ahead. Uh, by Sister Nohalinda. Okay, the, uh, Sister Nohalinda, uh, you can ask Prof. Um, Assalamualaikum, Prof. Salam. I think it's been more than 10 years. I'm also from, I did my degree in UTM. Um, I last saw you when I did my degree. Uh, my question is, um, um, I've joined a seminar before, and then one of uh, the speakers suggest, uh, suggested that uh, research revolving, uh, uh, involving cross disciplines will be difficult. But um, in my opinion, being in the built environment, um, we as designers, um, you know, uh, somehow will uh, be involved, will be engaged with other disciplines. So I'd like to ask, what do you think about that? Because um, I I, prop, I I tabled my uh, my topic to the speaker, and then uh, he was kind of skeptical because uh, I'm doing um, my 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 subject uh, my subject study is on children with cerebral palsy, um, and then uh, he uh, commented that I'm crossing uh, discipline, so it will be difficult for oh. my study. Uh -huh. If you are in Ivy League University or Stanford, if you don't cross discipline, you are unaware your, your, your proposal will be turned down. It must be cross discipline. I agree. Because it, it must serve humanity, right? Example, uh, well, just now I show you about Pulau Bumbun, children of Baja Ubian, right? Not only on environmental psychology, let, 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 let's get a not only on childhood development, in the discipline, not only on uh, children's connective behavior in the discipline, then she comes with rural planning. So at least four disciplines, at least, I think more than that. It must be crossed. Then all these people say that, wow, now I understand how does you bring, in my case, how does you bring 
the discipline of healthcare, discipline of hospital architecture, discipline of nurse, uh, pediatric nursing, discipline of pediatric psychology into landscape architecture. Beautiful. We should that. We should do that. If not, you are doesn't go up from the silos. Tell him that you must go up from your shelf. Because um, after tabling, after uh, sharing my my topic with him, I and then he, when he said that, I was a bit um, disappointed. But then yeah. when I when when I thought back that uh, we are as designers, we are we have to connect with different type of groups in yes. order to in order to produce uh, the bet a better environment, a better built environment. Yeah, that's noble. Uh, I think Dr. Zalina would like to respond. Dr. Zalina, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, she was looking at this cross disciplinary. So, what is your stand on the research we go cross with others, not only in our discipline? Okay. Um, there's some. Um, some disruption uh, on my background. <laughs> my kid, my kid is crying. <laughs> okay. Um. Okay. Um. I think. Um. For for. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Sorry. Ah, <laughs> uh, never mind. Okay. okay. Uh, next question, please. <clears throat> I, I'll I'll answer the question in 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 the chat uh, chat. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, Mazina, can you read the, the next question? Uh, uh, not here. I think I, we can open the uh, question and answer if you have uh, any other question for the participants. Do you have any more uh, question to ask, Prof? Can I, can I have one more? Go ahead. Yes. Um, yeah, um, I'm doing my master's by research. So my um, my topic is entitled physical environment in homes for the well-being of children with cerebral palsy. So um, I see a lot of uh, relativity and a lot of similarity um, that is shared by Prof Ismail and 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 um, the, the your previous students um, have uh, done. So I'd like to ask. What what would be my patterns of regularity? Would be it would, would it be the um, the behaviors that I have to uh, focus on? Okay, the answer is for you. Uh, what you like to contribute? Um, I'm, my contribution is um, in the end to provide a framework or or a guideline on what are the physical environments okay. attributes uh, for in masters, homes. For masters, no need about uh, no need about framework. Let alone guideline. Even PhD, I wouldn't allow my student to do guideline. No, okay. just certain, just a stance. But that, how does this subject that you research, that you research on, leads to what? Is it enough? But the beauty comes in your interpretations. Yes, guys, in in our discipline, our interpretation is thick. If you look at geometric, real estate quantity serving for which I check many PhD research, they are just reporting. Yes. When they have the result, they just explain the result a bit, no interpretation, they get their PhD. Uh, not ours. We want to interpret so that people understand how they can apply what they have read from the thesis serving the humanity. Yes? Okay, thank you guys. All right. I think we'll stop here because I have one I stand by now uh, discussion with Nustas Brat Marek uh, solo. There I yeah about less than one hour from now I prepare something yeah because uh, just to tell you everybody that uh, I will move to that ministry next year. Thank you guys. Uh, hopefully you all enjoy your PhD journey, master's degree. Hopefully you all able to reach the end. And produce an excellent novelty. Thank you, guys. Bye. Thank, Thank you, you Thank you. Thank you very much, Prof. Thank you very much, Prof. Uh, Thank you, Prof. Take care. Thank you, Dr. Mazina. Thank you, Prof. Thank you, Dr. Mazina. Yes.
All right. Can we end our session, Prof, uh, with a recitation of Tasbih Kifara and Surah Al As? Thank, Thank you very you. much, Prof. Yep. Thank Assalamualaikum. You, Prof.